Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. Thanks for joining us this live trading room uh, webinar. Hope that uh, you managed to to get inside. It was um, the the time, of course, was a bit different in the email. So I hope that some of you. Should be at 7:45 a.m. GMT, as always. Okay. So before we take a look at the market, this presentation, first of all, please be aware of the fact that uh, this webinar is intended for a global audience. Please take it into account that it may not be suitable for everyone. To find out if it is or isn't, uh, get uh, go to sorry AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. Also, of course, there's high risk involved in trading for exchange and other financial products, please be aware of that and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice, it is for informational and educational purposes only. And uh, by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with the disclaimer. You can always request a copy by going to the same AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com and following the same procedure as mentioned just a minute ago. All right, so today, oh, sorry about that. Today, as always, we're going to use this model for the entry strategy. It's a, it's a five-step plan so that we are not jumping into a trade or chasing the market when it's too late or too early, but try to find a, let's say, emotionally balanced uh, entry strategy. And, of course, exit strategies is, is something more complex, in my opinion, and we'll be looking at that from different uh, angles. Most of the time, of course, I'll be mentioning stop losses, TPs, but perhaps sometimes even show stop losses. Already. So this week, besides Camarilla and intraday trading uh, this morning, we have tomorrow Forex Strategy, same time, 7.45 a.m. GMT. And Wednesday evening, tomorrow evening, Nenet is going to take a look at Fibonacci arcs, expansions, and fans. And then Together, Nenet and myself, Thursday evening, are going to take a look at flashback of 2014 and expected trends in 2015. That's going to be fun, I think, because you're going to take a look at the slides I showed you a year ago and my predictions and see, was I horribly wrong or was I a bit accurate, a bit wrong, or was I spot on? And we'll find out Thursday evening. All right. And, of course, besides that, we're going to take a look at the, my predictions at least, and uh, yeah, of the next year. So expected trends in 2015. So that's all this coming this week. Next week, there will not be many uh, webinars. Dennett will have a, his webinars on the 22nd and 24th, but I will not have my webinars. So only Dennett will have two webinars throughout that week. This 24th is actually incorrect here. There will be no webinar on, uh, on that morning. All right, just so that you, just so that you know. Alrighty, so with that said, we can head over to take a look what's going on in, for instance, the blog. Don't forget, Animal Markets have a blog, and you can find setups. You see that Nandan was talking about the pound dollar, so let's take a look. That is saying pound shows a confluence, that's 57-ish. Alright, so and if it's rejected, let's see, if it doesn't exceed 57.40, okay, so 57.40 has to hold, and uh, he would expect more downside around 57 for target at 56.40 or 56.10. So let's take a look. All right, if you're new in here, by any chance, let me know because it's always useful. I can explain a bit more details about what uh, is happening in this trading room, all right? Uh, otherwise, I assume that you've been here more often and, and you know the, the drill, let's say, the, the, the sequence and stuff uh, more thoroughly, of course. Uh, the Camarilla is the topic of today. The Camarilla will only be visible on the 30-minute, 50-minute chart, by the way, not on all time frames. Okay. It's especially useful for... Uh, intraday trading, I believe, or scalping. So, what happened yesterday? Let's take a look at the 30 minute chart. Nana was talking about 50, 
seven. I'm not sure when he wrote it. It was the fourteenth, the fifteenth. Let's take a look again. Ah, I already got rid of it. Well, price went up to fifty-seven forty-six, and then crashed indeed to fifty-six ten. So, okay, price you know exceeded his fifty-seven forty by a few pips, but very marginally, and then indeed crashed to the fifty-six forty fifty-six ten. So that was seems to be as far as I can see spot on yesterday that fall uh, that he had in his plan. So hopefully I managed to grab those uh, those pips based on this analysis. If you liked at least, of course, it's always your decision. Yesterday I also released um, the video analysis. You can find that wave analysis, just like this wave analysis you can find for today. On Mondays you'll see a weekly overview of the major currency pairs that shows the, uh, the summary that I expect for the pound dollar the dollar yen, odd USD, and euro dollar. Basically, what I said yesterday is that the euro dollar is, and all the dollars, in fact, are looking like a bit of a retracement. In fact, all the uh, all the dollars, the pound, the dollar yen, all of them, basically, to me, are looking like a spot where price could uh, get into some retracement. We also have to think about time, as then it says also often enough. And I do too, as you know. Time is not just uh, a useless element on the charts. Uh, let's see. Are you seeing my screen, by the way? Okay, I think now you are. Okay. I hope that didn't last too long, but anyhow, I just showed you Nenet's example and uh, where you can find the wave analysis, which is analytics, and go to wave analysis. Regarding the calendar, we have today we had Aussie monetary policy meetings, German PMI, Bank of England, Governor speaking, Bank of uh, G, 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 um, GBP, not GDP, GBP, CPI, but tomorrow primarily we have FOMC statement. So anyhow, risk calendar, wave analysis, traders blog where you see Nenet set up. You can all find it under analytics and education and webinars. That's all you missed. Uh, let's see. Kaylin says that it was a later call when price was at 57. Okay. Yeah, then we didn't get the pullback. Uh, or I'm not sure exactly how you meant it, but the need felt to that level. But anyhow, uh, my Point back to, back to the analysis I suggested. Basically, the dollar seems to be a bit in a, a correction, and it could, considering the time, the point in time, that we're getting close to the holiday season. Next week, there's, for instance, Christmas. The week after, there is New Year's Eve. Uh, some countries and nations celebrate, and cultures celebrate under uh, holidays. Uh, for instance, on January the 6th or, you know, throughout this time, there's a lot of things uh, that are happening. So the market slows down in these weeks a lot, typically from mid-December, which is that was technically yesterday, but primarily, of course, in the week of the holidays itself. So next week, we could see that consolidation. So the dollar slowdown here, I think, makes, from that point of view, makes pretty, pretty good sense because we can see just like three weeks of, easily three, four weeks of holiday consolidation and then perhaps a bit of extension of that consolidation to the upside before a downtrend continues. So if my forecast, because this is more of a forecast than any really trading information, is that uh, basically I wouldn't be surprised to see price do something like this for three, four weeks, then in mid-January move up somewhere around February hit the 38.2 fib and at February March start falling down. So that's my current prognosis and falling down to the minus 16 at 113. That's the primary target I would say. It could be even lower, it could be an extension further down, but uh, that is the primary target. Could even go to parity, but we have to see how impulsive the fifth wave basically here, one, two, three, four, five, and this is the fourth, and this is the fifth will be. Time will tell. But 
looks like there is a potential that we start at four. And four, as you know, could be long. Fourth, four waves, fourth waves are typically pretty big consolidations. The second wave was only about 20 days. So we probably see easily a doubling of that. So about 40 days brings us already indeed to end of January. So it could easily be February or even March before we have that. Waves four are typically shallow. So in that regard, price should not go back above 50 fib. That should be the absolute maximum which is 129.80, which 70, which is very close to 130 as well. So I wouldn't expect to go price for price to go above 130. 128, the 38.25 seems more logical. So with that said, also if you look at the weekly chart for instance, you see this is the first bullish candle that had a decent size plus a close near the high. That's the first candle with that combination since 31 weeks, so it, it, it probably does mean the completion of wave three. Considering the timing of things, I think that is also quite likely. All right, so that's just, of course, uh, a forecast. Doesn't mean uh, I will trade that. I will let price decide how I trade. But at the mean, in the meantime, the only trade that I think is very is somewhat interesting. Maybe I should say is if we retrace this bullish candle and get closer to last week's low and this in anticipation of the bigger consolidation. That's the only thing that really pops in my mind. If we can get as low, I, I would have to see at least price get into this zone here. About here, 123.60-ish, but halfway, and that could be a bouncing spot for a zigzag. These things are always a bit risky. Don't get me wrong, because of the fact that there is a downtrend here already strongly in play. And every time we went back to the band here, price continued lower, in fact. And at times, it didn't even get back to the band. Look at this area here. It didn't even touch the band. So within this trend, this part was the most impulsive, wasn't it? Why? Because it didn't touch the band. So this was probably a wave three. That's how you can use it for analysis. Anyhow, until that point, we can look at the intraday trades. I wouldn't say swing trades are the best. Yeah, we have FOMC. That's going to have an impact. It, I mean, obviously, if the bottom breaks, my analysis is out of the window. If it goes above the 50, my analysis is out of the window. Those are key levels for my opinion. Price should stay with between those for, for a while, if I if I, my prognosis is right. But it doesn't really ma matter for the Camarilla strategy, I'm kind of getting off point here. Um, if we look at that, you can see prices between H3 and L3. You can still, of course, use bigger analysis to judge if, using, if you want to use Camarilla on this time frame. So let's take a look at the four hour if you look at the four hour chart, is the euro dollar at this point in time when looking at moving averages and trend lines, like this, all right, is it at a spot that you find interesting? Yes, no. Because basically, of course, we can use, we can use Camarilla uh, at any, any point. It will always give those levels, but there are many pairs out there. Would it make sense to look at Camarilla? Is this something you would like to trade? Yes, no. When looking at the four-hour chart. It will certainly depend on what type of trader you are as well. I got two answers. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get a couple of more. So 
So once again, is the four-hour euro-dollar chart something that you find interesting? And there's no right or wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm trying to. It's not a test or something like that. It's, it's just an opinion, in fact. <clears throat> I think that uh, most people are sleeping. <laughs> okay, so we got a couple of more answers. Bob says, wait, Bjorn, you first said no, but not in a four hour, but then you said yes, looks good. I think what you mean is probably on other time frames it looks good, I guess. It's my best guess at least. If I under let me know. Ah, no for Camarilla, okay. But the four hour you like, okay. Uh, and Nicola says no with a question mark, and Justina says not for me. Yeah, it all depends. Really, there's no right or wrong. I, that was not a trick. That is really true. There's no right or wrong. For me, if I give you my opinion, I'm not a big fan of it, no, because of the fact that on a four hour chart, we've already broken out of the downtrend. Where, where did that happen? Right here, this spot. And price is, is, is pushing too much uh, above it at the moment for me to consider it a four-hour downtrend. Now, daily is definitely still downtrend, yes, but not the four-hour. And I think if you look at intraday trading, probably four-hour is more important than daily. Then furthermore, we're kind of stuck in this triangle. And, uh, well, I'm not a big fan of trading triangles. I'd rather have trends. So, yes, no, I'm not a big fan of it. Therefore, I'm not uh, really looking into this, uh, this pair. But if you look at the Camarilla with the four-hour lines, you can see the Camarilla is also pretty close to each other. Little volatility, low volatility yesterday means the levels are pretty close by. And the one-hour chart also, the pivot points are pretty close by. And Buren adds that uh, that a break would be needed first. Yeah. No, I I I, I can imagine. It's it's actually one could even trade it though, to be honest, from from these bouncing spots. But at this moment, you're right that the space here is getting pretty small. So now it's not really that profitable anymore. But um, a range is tradable, of course, if, if we have some space there. Now it's getting iffy, iffy indeed. But um, to go back to the four-hour chart, also the moving averages are quite choppy here, so that's why I'm not a big fan of it. From the 31 point of view, the, all the pivots are close to each other as well, so I'm not, therefore not liking it too much. That's my reason. But there is no right or wrong, because um, depending on what tools you use, how you look at it, you could see opportunities that I don't see. You could see it in a different way. That's all the gist of trading, of course, in a way. So there is no right or wrong. But uh, with considering this, the, the, the choppiness here and the upside momentum, it almost seems like an upside trying to break would be more, despite the daily downturn, would be more logical. But it could easily break down to and just correct lower and then we'll find upside again. Why upside? Back to the long-term analysis, what was the only trade I, I found interesting from a, from a swing point of view was that if we see signals that if it breaks lower and moves that downside, that you see kind of weakness in here and a turnaround. So perhaps from an intraday perspective, there could be a fall, a pretty sturdy fall even because the space below the trend line is about 80, 110. 60 pips, but that's when I would you know, start to keep an eye on potential reversals for a reversal swing up, if you see what I mean. So basically, there could be a break here. Intraday, there could be a break lower. And the break, if, you, if the break does happen to the upside, be careful of 126, 125.90 because of the fact that there is a 23.6. And if it does break down, then be careful of 123.50, let's say, because that could be then the bouncing spot like that.
So that would be the plan if I were interested in the, in the, in the setup, in the, in the currency, but I'm only really much, very interested if it really gets into either extremes more, more either higher or lower. All right, so let's take a look at gold. Let's see. One second, folks. All right, here it is. And Nicola was uh, interested in gold, and looks like we're seeing some resistance. The price indeed making a bull flag here, as Darshan recognized and we made an upside to the target probably. Very close to the minus 272. It was a tad shy of it. it. Sometimes happens. And now moving down again. So in my opinion it's uh, it's still looking pretty corrective now. Although we had some impulse to the upside. Overall this is still looking more impulsive than the upside. The question is at what point is it tradable? Still have patience. The four hour is still not, uh, the moving average is totally not aligned as yet. Maybe if it gets back up to here, the daily, uh, the weekly pivot point, the daily R1. Or if it makes a bear flag like this, that hits the daily, it could also fall. All in all, more sh looking for short than long I would say. If we look at the weekly chart though you can clearly see that last week's low is still in play and we're very close to it. That would lean itself more to look for short upon a pullback and a retracement of yesterday's bearish candle. So that's, I don't see any reason personally to, to go long here at the moment. I don't know. This, except the weekly candle, but otherwise everything is bearish. And I don't think that that is enough confluence to, to look for, for longs. I think, if anything, shorts make sense at this point upon the pullback. <laughs> Dashin says you took, took note, you took notes of my words on gold. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very nice break. And uh, curious if we can get the fall. We already had the break of the bottom of 1180. So if we do move below 1180 again, the next, I'd say, smaller target, I would say, is probably this minus 618 at 1,082. So the same dollar situation, I think, is for the yen too, which is retracing. Last week was a bearish candle in a very big uptrend. So it looks like here we can get retracement to the dollar yen. If it gets up to the H3, it would be an interesting short, I think. As a counter trend trade, perhaps, depending on uh, how you look at it, to L5. Pound dollar. Well, I'm not a big fan of the pound dollar, even less so than the uh, euro dollar, um, because of this particular four hour chart. Like that. So, Basically, we had some spikes above it and below it, but we really didn't box ourselves out of this zone ever since uh, more than a month ago. So when I look at the four-hour chart, I don't see the need to look at the 30-minute chart, if you know what I mean, because of the fact that the, the four-hour is looking so, so corrective. If we do get a break, there's also that danger that we get a false break. So not too interested in the pound dollar. If from the majors the dollar yen looks even actually the best one. 
from the H3. The Aussie looks more in a resistance zone at the moment. It could be ready for a short. The Aussie was the exception amongst the majors because of the dollar yen. I had dollar weakness, the euro dollar two, the pound dollar two. But the Aussie, in fact, didn't. The Aussie lost against the dollar whereas the others gained against the dollar. Aussie was the weakest last week of these, these, these five. And you saw the euro odd and pound odd indeed move a lot up logically because the Aussie lost against the dollar, but the dollar lost against the euro and pound. So the Aussie is still in bearish territory because it's, look at these moving averages here, 13 EMA, 21 EMA, and this is, it should be the 89. Prices. 21, excuse me, 13, 21, and 89. Prices below it, the moving averages have an angle, and they're all aligned. It, uh, it's, it's not rocket science to see that that's a downtrend on the weekly chart, plus last week's candle was bearish. So looking at daily, we see the same thing. For our chart, we see the same thing. There's only one thing that could be potentially harmful is this particular slowing down of price while breaking the bottom. That looks like a falling wedge, and falling wedges are sometimes warning signs for a reversal back to the upside in this case. Otherwise, everything looks bearish. So there are two things what uh, could be good. It's either shorting if price does get higher, uh, for instance, from the weekly pivot point right here. Which is the H5. Or, even shorting it earlier, at the top of this falling wedge, which we are right now. Like this. Uh, and hope that the falling wedge will break to the downside. If not, there could be a bounce again off the L3. So it's a bit more risky. Right? One could try it. Try to hang on. If it does bounce, try to get out for break even. And if it does break, you're in the trade. If you wait for H5, it's going to be a bit more, um, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, riskier in the sense, not riskier, but there's a chance that price could, cannot uh, reach there. So let's see if there's anything better than the Aussie. It's, it's just as good as the yen, I think. Although the dollar yen doesn't have the rising, the falling wage. Dollar Swiss, looking at the four-hour chart, is in a bearish trend at the moment, but long-term is still bullish. Right? Look, price is below the 21 to 34 band here, but it's still above long-term moving averages. So it's in a bit of a difficult spot here. It definitely has bearish pressure. Trading the dollar weakness could could be better uh, with the Swissy and the yen than the euro and the dollar. I think uh, the euro and the pound. Sorry. And of course, that's a bit contradictory because the dollar weakness here 
actually the Aussie was looking for the opposite, was looking for dollar strength. So maybe the Aussie dollar is therefore a bit of a warning sign that uh, that the do Aussie downside, Aussie dollar downside, is should be treated with some cautiousness because we are seeing mixed signals here. The Aussie strength, uh, the Aussie weakness against dollar strength, and but the dollar weakness against Swiss and yen. So I would be cautious with the Aussie. I think. The dolly and dollar Swiss are probably looking a bit better. As your dollars reaching the daily R1. But looking at the dolly and dollar Swiss, I like the dollar yen more. Dollar Swiss has not moved a lot. And ultimately, it, it still all in all looks very choppy. It might have broken a trend line like this, but its, it's break is just very, very um, slow and has just recently happened. Could still turn out to be a false break. So I like the dollar yen short actually more at this point. But I would require at this point a bit of a pullback, especially if you look at the monthly pivot point. So you need a bit of a pullback. Dollar CAD is close to getting into a minus 272 target. If you look at this particular swing high, swing low, uh, let's see, which one was it? Getting into this target. However, I think that looking at the acceleration we're seeing, we'll probably just see a bull flag. And I would expect again an upside up to minus 618 target. So I, I think the CAD weakness will continue. We might have seen some stall in the next weeks, but eventually minus 618, minus 1,000, 122, 129, I think are definitely potentials. For the moment, though, uh, there's no trade on the, uh, to the upside here as yet because we're too close to the target. Alrighty, let's see. Pound yen. And the pound has a news event, but this too looking very bearish at the moment. Anyhow, it's going to be difficult to trade it with the news event that close, but uh, if it does make a retracement, it, uh, it could be worth shorting as well, just like the dollar yen. It, Still has space to the minus 618 target, as you can see. So any retracement of a bearish 4-hour candle, as we've seen here, could be another good you know, continuation down to the minus 618 target. So Pan Yen, Dali Yen look the best, but a bit of retracement or waiting for the news is needed. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Buren is looking at Cat Swiss. Okay. I don't think I have the Cat Swiss here, fortunately. But I think that, uh, as far as I remember from this morning, it looked good for a short. Do you have the same? Okay, cool. Great. Purin and Bob see the same. Uh, the turning spot for pound yen for the upside or for the down, for more downside? By the way, for those that came in a bit later, I noticed that some of you have arrived in, in the last uh, 20 minutes or so, or 10 minutes maybe. Uh, the I'm not sure if 
your later arrival was due to the time mentioned in the email, but from next week and onwards there from next week onwards there should be well actually next week we don't have a session. So two weeks from now, sorry, uh, we will have a session just at the normal 7.45 a.m. GMT. Turn is back up. Okay. Um, yeah, makes sense indeed, as you say. It's been sliding down indeed. Uh, well, I would say man, 618 target looks like a nice level. Had a 50% bounce here, so that's 182.38. So the L4. From this perspective, it's looking very close. It's looking very close to that target, isn't it? But ultimately, it's still about 70 pips left uh, before we get there. But on the pound yen, that's, that's not much, apparently. So that could be a bouncing spot, but with emphasis on could, because uh, not always these targets get equally uh, respected. Here you do get a bit of a bounce to minus 272, but it's just a slight upside. 60 pip upside before you get downside again. A target like that could get pierced as well by 20, 30 pips before you get upside. So we have to be cautious. We have to keep an eye on whether we see some, some confirmation. But it could be easily a zigzag. Oh. Your pound, by the way, is at a bouncing spot. It's in a daily, uh, a bit of a daily struggle here with this triangle. And that triangle is actually, if you look at the monthly chart, you can see this triangle right here looking at the lows and low highs. You can see that the monthly candles have not been able to break the lows or highs. All of that has happened right at the support level at 77.50. 77.50, uh, we have not, or the Europon has not been able to break ever since uh, winter to uh, beginning 2008, which is almost now seven years ago. So it's it's right at the support level, but it could also easily be used for a bouncing spot. Ultimately, though. If it does break through 77.50, it could, of course, easily be a, send, a descending wedge, and boom, we get the breakout to the downside. So if it does push through 77.50, it could mean a lot. For the moment, though, it's not breaking below it, and in fact, it's making a contracting triangle right at the support. That triangle could, of course, get broken to the upside for trade up to the resistance line, or the triangle breaks, and perhaps later on we can break the support. Uh, I'm not a big fan of trading the euro pound intraday, at best, uh, intra-week or swing. So I'm only showing you this long-term perspective. Does anyone hear me, by the way? Darshan lost my sound. Okay, thanks, Simon. All right, let me just quickly write Darshan. Let's see, Kiwi. A bit of a struggle here. Not too interesting if you look at it that weekly than the daily. If anything, it looks more like a bouncing spot, but it's pretty messy. It's not anymore a bull flag. It maybe could have started out to be look like a bull flag, but in the meantime, it kind of broke through the bull flag as a consolidation. So it really could go either way. It, it, it could break or break like this. It's it's a bit of messy consolidation like that. Well, 
Well, the year odd is certainly in a trend, so the upside makes sense. Still a continuation of the uptrend. One more push. So let's see. We had actually recently a bounce here at 151.10. So a bounce at L4, or if price gets back to the L3, those are logical spots. So a stop loss would have to be below uh, this bottom here uh, if those L3 or L4 are traded. If price, however, breaks through H3, then probably a tighter stop loss could be used below L3. The other option is to wait for H3 to break but then wait for subsequent hook back to about halfway to look for a long as well. Even on the hourly chart, it looks pretty decently set up. take a look at this hour's candle. If it closes not too far off the high, it, it could be the breakout candle. It could be the, not maybe the breakout candle. It could be, it could set up in the sense that it's pushing above the moving averages, but it probably will not break this trend line fully. But it could be the moment that uh, it starts breaking because here, for instance, and here, you can see we had follow through to the upside after pushing back above the moving averages. Here we had a double dip, double dip below the moving average, here two. And here we would have a two in fact. If anything, the euro odd looks the most interesting. I think uh, the best, in my opinion, is waiting for this hour to close. If it closes bullish, if it closes near the high, look for retracement about halfway to this hourly candle. Just above halfway probably. And the stop loss preferably below this this pin bar here, this hourly low. The target 152.75 probably. One fifty two fifty maybe is even more conservative. Already. That's the Euro. Pound out could be interesting too, but it has the news event. Odd cat is a, is a bit messy. Uh, the New Zealand's too, the pound New Zealand, New Zealand, I think. Bounce off that minus 272 target. We're making an uptrend ever since. As we know, and um, Scott in the middle, I think. We've got resistance line here. Support line here. And it's just about halfway, so doesn't seem that interesting. The CAD weakness could have some effect on the against the euro and the pound as well. I remember talking about the euro CAD bullish candle that we had here and about halfway or a retest of the that candle low for a good long and although it took a week of bearishness eventually we did get the turnaround so that is a swing trade that is working well if you took it and uh, We're getting the CAD weakness. So if anything, looking for a dip probably for more upside would make sense. A dip doesn't have to be that far as long as price gets at least back to the 21 band. That's the that's what I would need to see happen because otherwise it's, it's a runaway train at the moment.
silver wow all the way down to 14 who would have thought it not many were thinking about 14 including me when I was here up in uh, up in the 30s I was thinking 20s maybe higher teens but not all the way 14 <laughs> and yeah uh, odds we see Good trend. Also looks good to me for short for Aussie weakness. Maybe even better than the Aussie dollar, because the dollar uh, is showing weakness as, as well against other pairs. So the odd Swiss could be better than than the odd dollar or the dollar Swiss. In fact, so ideas could be the break of L three below this this fractal here maybe even the best one is again using the hourly candle obviously I mean there's always a bit of a risk because of the fact that you know trend has lasted for a long time when it lasts that long there's always the slight chance or somewhat chance that uh, it will make a retracement just at the moment that the trend doesn't just doesn't continue anymore. That's always a bit of a risk. But I would say this hourly candle could be good to keep an eye on. So the outsource seems to be one of the favorites at the moment. Thought the end was good, but it uh, it's actually moving further without much of a retracement at this point. Uh, Kaylin is asking about 116.67. Well, there are a lot of people have pivot point confluences here. That's true, but let's see if we put a fit from here to here. What it says is we're at a minus two seventy two target, okay. Ultimately though, I think it's just a small bounce if it does bounce here. I think a bigger bounce is more around one fifteen fifty, one fifteen seventy. Because there's a minus 618 target and a 38.2 retracement. Sorry, if I put the fib correctly, it's actually 11550. So I don't see much of a bounce at this spot. It could be a bit, it could be some correction like that. But then would expect downside. All right, now it's up to you. Do you have a particular? Uh, because I think that looking at intraday, still the, the dahlia makes sense to me. I have upon a pullback, and you also see short. And what else? There was one more, I think. Pao Yen. Not sure which one it was. Let me think for a second. Your odd, right? Your odd was looked interesting. Yeah, those three, I think, at the top of my head. Cat short, 96.40, let me think. Cat short, you're talking about the dollar cat? No. Odd, oh, odd cat, sorry. I thought you said, I thought it said end, but it's actually with a U, not an end. That's funny. Uh, let's see, odd cat. Looking for shorts, I think, makes sense because they're definitely in a downtrend.
Now, the lower time frame has been corrective, but if it gets out to H4, which is 96.40, I think it makes a lot of sense indeed. And the pivot points here are a bit lower, but okay. If we put a fib on this first correction here, Ninety six thirty indeed, minus two seventy two target. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. I like it. The stop loss is a bit of a different matter because uh it could spike up to ninety eight six eighty. You never know. So there are a few options here. It could be a looser stop loss, which would be above ninety seven maybe even above 97.40, but that's pretty wide. The tighter one would have to be then just maybe above 96.50, or waiting for a wick and putting it above the high. Also depends how long you want to keep that trade, plus what target you have in mind. A looser style plus would only make sense if, you, if you're know, aiming for a wider take profit as well. Otherwise, um, it will probably not give enough reward to risk. But if you, let's see, a one-hour candle, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Some cases I like four hour more um, than one hour. One hour is a bit more aggressive because sometimes you just you see one hour, but then a good one hour signal with the momentum keeps pushing and pushing and then blast away the hourly. That's kind of the risk with that uh, with the one hourly. Um, ultimately, you know, it's some cases are so that really both could be used. I think this is one of them, but I think that judging from the strength of the four hour trend, I don't think there's there's it's should be okay, I think. There is some divergence on the four hour chart here. And then maybe the daily. Two hour two hour candle could be would be nice, but we don't have it. Um, well I think ultimately an hourly is okay. I mean the it would be okay if the wider stop loss would be used, but if you want to get in and out today and use a tighter one, then yeah, there's always the risk that uh, the hourly candle wick high gets gets broken. So going 15 pips above the hourly high would make it a bit better. Ultimately, though, I think it is okay if um, if the hourly is used plus stop loss at least 15 pips above the high. Yeah, what indeed, I think that uh, loose stop loss is, is not as bad as many people, traders think. I don't think some traders even think about loose stop losses. It just scares them too much, but ultimately it uh, does also make us flexible because if we use a loose stop loss, why? If we have a, a looser stop loss and price is going against us, we have the opportunity to still exit when price um, when price goes up, right? We can still exit a break even or smaller loss potentially. We could also live through a bigger drawdown here of the trade before maybe it goes our way. We have a bit more options, whereas if you put a tight, tighter, tighter one, it's over and out right away. Loose one gives us options, in most cases, I would say. Not always, of course. And of course, exiting for break-even is not an easy thing because um, we always are thinking, okay, the trade is looks good, oh, it's going against us, oh, it's going with us. So exiting at that point is not easy, but 
uh, doesn't have to even be here necessarily. It could even be on the, you know, if it's making a triangle, something like that, then we don't like the overall structure. It gives us a bit more more options potentially. Using those options are not always easy though. Any other questions that you would like to look at? Any pair that you have in mind for today? For a long-term setup, perhaps. Be careful, though, next week, really, with the intro week. I wouldn't recommend it. Or I, I, I'm skipping trading all, I mean, the entire week, personally. It could be a good time to uh, do some demo testing or practicing or paper trading or EA testing or pattern recognition, reading a book about trading, or just taking some time off, of course, it's another option. Small promotion for myself, if you, if you like. Follow me at uh, Twitter, at Chris Forsick. And with that said, I don't see any questions, so I guess we can wrap it up. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow we'll be back to webinars morning and evening, and I wish you all happy hunting. Cheers, everyone.